If everybody could please stand for the presentation of our colors. Everyone, please remain standing and join us in the singing of our national anthem. Have your seats. Good afternoon. I'm Duncan Wagaman, student body president. And on behalf of everyone that made this service possible, we'd like to say thank you for joining us today. I stand before you today completely humbled at the notion of honoring 75 individuals that lost their lives and forever reshaped the foundation of Marshall University. Although I never had the opportunity to meet the people that lost their lives that November evening in 1970, through the legacy they left on Marsh University and the surrounding Huntington community, it's as if we've known each other for a very long time. You see, on November 14, 1970, Marsh University made a transition from a school to a family. And it's those fallen family members that we gather here today <coughs> and remember and celebrate their lives because it is through their lives and their story that make us Marshall University. Growing up in Huntington, West Virginia, I felt like I always understood the effects the 1970 plane crash had on the Huntington community. But until you step onto campus, as a true son or daughter of Marshall, you never quite get it. And for some of you, today might be that day. As we stand around this fountain and remember the lives that were taken too early, just remember that that November evening and the way it shaped our history is bigger than any of us will ever be. 
And it's because of the lives lost by those men and women and the way our community rallied that Marshall University has a unique story that it does and is the great institution that it is. And with that, some will say 44 years is enough and it's time to move on. But as long as there's still one person within this community or at this university that has been affected by the plane crash and wants to remember the lives of someone who lost theirs too soon, then we will continue to have this ceremony for those fallen family members and their loved ones. It's the least we can do. Thank you. We will now have an invocation from Reverend Steve Harvey, chaplain of our, of our football team, followed by a musical selection from, Tom, from Taylor Isaacs and Rodrigo Almeida. We will then hear remarks from the executive director of our MU Alumni Association, Matt Hayes, athletic director, Mike Hamrick, head football coach, Doc Holliday, and our university president, Stephen J. Cup. Following those remarks, will be our keynote address delivered by Tommy Shoebridge, brother of Lionel Ted Shoebridge. After our keynote address, we'll have the singing of The Fountain by the Marshall University Chorus. Finally, we will lay the wreath and silence the memorial fountain while we recognize our eternal Marshall family. It is now my honor to introduce Reverend Steve Harvey. Thank you. It's a privilege uh, and honor for me to be here. Our coach told me today that it's all right for me to teach you something that's been the underlying theme of our football program all season long. You need to understand uh, that this whole deal is bigger than we are. It's bigger than the M that we wear on our helmet. And our team and our coaching staff recognize that. So today, because you're on a college campus, you're in a college setting, we're going to teach you something. That's what universities do. And before I pray, I want you to follow close attention, pay attention. I want everybody in this place to do what I'm about to do, or we're not going to proceed. You ready? Here we go. Live it. Get your hands out. Come on. Live it. Love it. That's an L. See that L? Love it. Be loyal to it. Live it. Love it. Hold up. Hold them L's up. Now get a picture of that. <laughs> Live it. Love it. Loyal to it. Loyal to it. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we're gathered here today. The disciples once said it is good for us to be here. It is good for all of us today to be in this Martian community, to be here in this place. One, to remember to remember that 44 years ago, 75 people in the Marshall family gave everything they have for this university. To reflect on the smiles and the personalities, the friendships, and the gifts of each individual that touched our lives, that has now been resurrected into life eternal. And to recall, to recall the contribution and the willingness that despite all the odds, this university goes forward. This program goes forward. The solemnness of this hour, Lord, today will soon be replaced tomorrow by the excitement of our 2014 Thundering Herd football team when they will take the field one more time yet again to protect the M. God, I ask your blessing and peace be with all the families, friends, folks everywhere who have gathered at this function today to let us know and be remembered, indelibly imprinted in our lives that we will never forget. Lord, extend to all of us today your hope, comfort, grace, and mercy. Thank you that at Marshall University, every game we play, every time we take the field, we know, without a doubt, we have a special, heavenly audience. We truly are Marshall. In Christ's name we pray this day. Amen. Live it. Love it. Loyal to it. God bless you.
President Kopp and First Lady Mrs. Kopp, administrative colleagues, university faculty and staff, my fellow alumni, students, distinguished guests, and all friends of Marshall University, good afternoon. My name is Matt Hayes, the Executive Director of Alumni Relations here at Marshall. I'm honored to stand before you today as together we remember November 14th, 44 years ago today. On behalf of the Alumni Relations staff and the Marshall University Alumni Association Board of Directors, I want to thank each one of you for your presence here today. As together we remember and pay homage to one of the most significant events in the history of our great university. Today we remember the 75 lives that were ended too soon and the great loss we suffered, both as a university community and a town. Remembering the devastation of November 14, 1970, paying tribute to those who lost their lives, lost loved ones, and honoring the memory of all 75 is of the utmost significance to all members of the Marshall family. The significance is embodied in the choice we make to faithfully gather in this place on this date to reflect upon what it truly means to be a son or a daughter of Marshall. We look back and remember where we have been while we also celebrate the level to which we have risen and the greater heights for which we strive. Time will not, will not nor will it ever, diminish the significance of this event because we know who we are. 
We know where we come from, and we know the direction in which we are headed. Marshall University continues to thrive and reach new heights in the face of adversity due to the insurmountable will, determination, and resiliency of our people, our excellent leadership, and a collective, tireless work ethic. The pride and reverence we all feel deep inside when someone mentions the name Marshall University serve as the ties that bind us together in community and make us family. As we continue our pursuit toward these greater heights, let us continually remember and forever honor those who have come before us. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please join me in welcoming to the podium the Director of Athletics here at Marshall University, Mr. Mike Hamrick. Good afternoon. Thank you, Matt. I am truly honored, humbled, and flattered to not only have the opportunity to be here this afternoon to address the group, to put, but to serve as a director of athletics of this great university. When I left here in 1980, my dream was to come back to Marshall University and serve it in some capacity. Fortunately, five years ago, I was given that opportunity. I walked by that fountain many a times as a student and never really understood what it meant. But as I get older, and as I continue now in my sixth year at Marshall to come to this event, I realize what it really means. That's a family. We lost many members of our family. But every day when I walk by that on this campus, I remember that family. November 14, 1970 was a tragic day that affected and changed the lives of so many people. Not only did it affect their lives, it changed this university. And it changed this community forever. I can only imagine how it has affected the lives of the families and the friends who lost loved ones. As a parent, I just can't imagine watching my son or my brother or my cousin play in a football game or listen to the game on the radio and then never see that individual again or in some cases my father, my mother. I can't imagine it. I've become very good friends with our featured speaker today, Tommy Shoebridge. And he'll tell you, Tommy was 17 years old. He not only lost his brother, but he lost his hero, a great football player here, a baseball player who had been drafted to play pro baseball. Tommy, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. As a 13-year-old kid, on November 14, 1970, my dream was to play for the Thundering Herd. And my dream was to play for those 75 individuals that lost their lives. And my dream was to help build this program back. And I see many of my teammates here that played in the 70s and the members of the young Thundering Herd. And sometimes we get dismissed but we held on, we held it together, we cared, we loved, we worked hard, and we kept this program together to where we could see the success that this program has seen in the last 25 to 30 years. Whether you believe it or whether you like it, this tragedy is woven into the fabric of our university 
and it has helped make this university the great university that it is today. I am so proud of my degree from Marshall University. I am so proud. I've worked many different places and in the forefront of my office, the first thing that you see is my degree from Marshall University. And what happened on November 14th, 1970 made that degree even more important. Our successful football program that exists today is because of those 75 brave souls who perished on November 14th. And that is why we must continue to support our football program. We must continue every November 14th to come here and pay tribute to those group of people who gave the ultimate, their lives, for us. We will never forget and we will always remember and we will always have compassion for those who lost their lives. I would very much like to thank the student government for their hard work and continuing this ceremony. There are so many young people out here today that have no idea the impact of this awful tragedy of what it had on this community and this university. I do. But when I'm gone, the only thing that I can ask you is you please keep the memory alive. And it's so rewarding to see so many students here who love and care about Marshall University. You are the ones that will keep this alive. And I thank you for that. I would also like to thank our great president, Dr. Stephen Kopp, for embracing this event and continuing to embrace the memory of this tragedy. Tommy Shoebridge, you have, ha you have no idea how much I appreciate you being here. You've been here many a times and we appreciate you and your family and the caring and the love that you have for Marshall University. In closing, I just ask one thing of everybody here today. At 7.36 p.m. tonight, no matter what you're doing, where you are, who you're with, will you please stop for a moment of silence and look up into the sky and thank those 75 individuals for giving the ultimate their life so we can have here at Marshall University what we have today. Thank you. At this point, it's, uh, it's my pleasure, my honor and privilege to bring up the head coach of our 9-0 undefeated football team, Coach Doc Holliday. Thanks, Mike. And good afternoon. What a great crowd. I mean, you look around, this is the biggest crowd that uh, I've ever seen since I've been here. But uh, as your head football coach, uh, it's a privilege for me to have the opportunity to speak to all of you on the anniversary of the saddest day in our university and athletic program history. We will always remember the tragedy and the 75 who perished. Their memory continues to live on in the spirit of the herd nation. And while we recall the tragic loss every year on this date, we have moved on with a vibrancy that pushes forward our school and athletic teams today. I would especially like to thank Tommy Shoebridge, who was a great football coach up in New Jersey, for being here today. He had the opportunity to spend some time at practice early on in the season, had the opportunity to be there yesterday, and had the opportunity to speak to our players, and that meant a lot to us and our football team. And I'm anxious to hear what he has to say to you today. I know he's going to be special. But I'd like to thank Tommy for being here today, not just in the memory of his brother, who was primed to become one of the first several great Marshall quarterbacks, but also to make the connection from the 1970 team to our current team. 
Our players will be wearing the commemorative number 75 on the side of their helmets tomorrow for the big game with Rice. It is a tribute uh, we began last season when we won at Tulsa <clears throat> on the anniversary of the plane crash. And we will make it a tradition that we wear that number every season in the game closest to November 14th. It was an emotional time a year ago as we were sitting in the hotel in Tulsa, we wore that number 75. It's a great tribute to our players that they understand when you step on that field with 75 on the side of your helmet, you better play extremely hard because you are playing for more than their teammates and themselves. They're playing for a community, a fan base, a university, and for those relatives and friends of those who died on that night. This date is part of our history, is part of our fabric. It's one of the things that bring us together. I would hope that everyone in the Herd Nation embraces this anniversary, as all us present here today do, as our university does, and as our football team does. I thank you for being here, and I promise you our team will play really extremely hard tomorrow for all of us. Thank you. I get the privilege. I get the privilege to uh, introduce our number one supporter, our biggest fan, and a guy that just uh, supports our program from uh, from day one. That's Dr. Stephen Cop. Thank you, Doc. And I have to tell you, this is uh, truly an inspiring assembly here today. I think as Mike mentioned and Doc mentioned, I don't think I've seen so many people at this event as today. And I thank each and every one of you for your support of Marshall University, for your support of this event, this ceremony, this very solemn ceremony, and what it means to Marshall University, what it means to you, what it means to our community and everyone who came before us and all who will come after us. I'm not sure Mike knows this, but the year 1970 has very special significance for me and for Jane. One month and two days before the plane crash, my mother passed away. I was 19. When I learned of the plane crash, and I remember this thought very vividly, as shattered as I was at that time, I simply could not imagine what it must have been like for the families, for everyone who was touched by that tragedy. As the years have progressed, and we, Jane and I, found our way here to Huntington and Marshall University, I was struck by the amazing coincidence associated with the year 1970. So this event has a very, very special meaning for me, certainly as an opportunity to remember 75 lives lost tragically. But also, it provides me with an opportunity to take time to think about and reflect on what life means and what tragedy means and how you overcome it. I'm so incredibly proud of the people of this university and the way we find the inner strength to pick up the shattered pieces of our lives and move on, not only with dignity, but with great determination to succeed at the highest levels. I've shared with Mike and I've shared with Doc, I've shared with all the folks here that I work with and associate with, which is many. 
Nobody really gives us anything here. We have to earn everything the hard way here at Marshall University. We're not among the privileged and the pampered. We're the hardworking folk that roll, roll up our sleeves every single day and do what other people, quite frankly, think they can't do. And in some ways, it involves doing the impossible, at least in the minds of other folks. As I look at where we are today and where we were 10 years ago, we're light years ahead of ourselves in terms of that 10-year period. It's because of the willingness and the dedication of everyone of this university to commit to a better future, better opportunities, and an absolute commitment that we're never going to settle for second or third best. I had the opportunity to talk to Teddy a little bit ago and his comments about the new facilities, the new indoor athletic complex, and what an incredible facility it truly is, and it is. And I shared with him that I'm not interested and refuse to do anything unless it's absolutely the best we can possibly do. I believe that in my heart and soul because I believe this community, the people of Marshall University, our family, deserve the best. And we're going to do everything we can to make that happen here. And we've been doing it consistently for the last decade. I believe in who we are. I believe in who we're becoming. I'm absolutely committed to it, as I know you are. Today is a day where we think about and remember 75 people who perished. But as I've traveled the nation and talked to alums, people who were connected through unusual connections to this tragic day. I continue to be amazed at the people I meet who prior to this tragedy had no connection to Marshall University, but who have found that connection because of people they knew, who knew people who knew people here at Marshall University and who knew people and families who were affected by this tragedy. I'll share with you one such experience. And this was the first time we traveled to East Carolina after the plane crash. And I was told that there would be a ceremony before the game for a commemorative plaque on the stadium at East Carolina. And I pretty much thought we'd have a lot of Marshall people there, but not so many East Carolina fans. But we got there about 15 minutes, 20 minutes early, and I kept checking my watch, and the place kept getting fuller and fuller and fuller. Finally to a point where we could hardly move. Yes, there were Marshall fans there, but there was an overwhelming number of East Carolina fans. So I took the opportunity to ask folks and on a random basis, said, why are you here? Every single one of them either was at that game on November 14th, 1970, or was a descendant of someone who had been at that game, and how that tragedy had affected their lives and their communities in ways that we weren't even aware of. I think it's important for our students to understand that the ripples of time and the ripples of tragedies are both unpredictable and intense. And while we might think this is just a Huntington tragedy, and it truly was, it transcends our community, it transcends our university and our state. It is described as the worst tragedy of its kind in the history of intercollegiate athletics for good reason. But today we remember and we honor those 75 individuals who were taken from us far too early. And in remembering, we find solace and are reminded of the power of love, hope, family, and community. 
We rejoice in the resiliency of the human spirit and our ability to triumph over tragedy and adversity. In remembering, we are reminded of how precious life is, how precious our time on this earth truly is. And in remembering, we affirm the meaning of our lives and the loss of loved ones. In so doing, we renew the courage to raise our hands and spirits, raise up our heads and our hands and spirits to go on. And to rededicate ourselves to remembering the precious souls who perished some 44 years ago and recommit to our solemn promise to never forget. May God bless all who are assembled here today. Thank you. Are you going to introduce Teddy? It's my privilege and honor at this time to introduce Tommy Shudbridge, who will deliver the keynote address. Tommy. Oh, you're going to do something. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> our featured speaker today is a man who, like many in our audience, lost a loved one in the 1970 Marshall plane crash. Tommy Shoebridge lost his brother, Ted, who was three years older than Tom when the plane went down. Teddy, as he was known to Marshall fans in the late 1960s and 1970, was a standout quarterback for the Thundering Herd. As Ernie Salvatore, a columnist from the Herald Dispatch, said in an interview with Pulitzer Prize winning author Julia Keller, some 20 years after the crash, he was a great kid, just a great kid. He was a star, no doubt about it. Keller continued in her writing, Teddy Shubich was the golden boy. He was handsome and charming with a big, sly, easy grin. He was a crackerjack athlete too. A young man who would have had to choose between football and baseball. He was a pro material in either sport. Either sport. Tommy Shubridge didn't make it to the pros as a player, but he has spent his entire adult life doing something that many would say is just as important, working with young people, teaching and coaching football and track at Lynnhurst High School in New Jersey. He retired from teaching two years ago, but remains head coach of the boys track team after 36 years and is a volunteer coach with the football team. Only One can only imagine the heartbreak Tom and the boy's older brother Terry suffered in losing their brother, or as Ted and Yolanda Shoebridge suffered in losing a son. He and 74 others left this earth too soon, and we at Marshall University will never forget them. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Teddy Shoebridge's younger brother from Lynnhurst, New Jersey, Mr. Tommy Shoebridge. I am uh, truly humbled to speak here today. I've spoken at uh, many booster club dinners in front of many parents, a lot of my teams. But this truly is a very special moment to me and my family. It's an honor and a privilege that I will never forget. I'd like to thank Lila and Duncan. Uh, President Cop, Mike Hamrick, who's become such a good friend, Coach Holiday and his staff to allow me to watch practice when I was here in September. Uh, being a football guy, that's a big deal. Um, and Coach and your players and your staff are truly representatives of what football is really meant to be. Uh, an expression of teamwork and love. And the wins and losses are great. But to be a family as a team, as we know, will be the way that we really win. And I thank Coach Holiday for uh, letting me be part of such a great program. I'd like to thank Jeff O'Malley, one of the assistant athletic directors, who's from Jersey. So everybody knows he's a great man. He's been a, a little bit of a confidant to me. Uh, I'd like to thank Coach Pruitt when I first came into town in 99 uh, to see the MAC championship game. And I was in his office, and Chad had just come back from a big, big interview with uh, uh, 
I think it was uh, for the road scholarship. And the secretary called in and said, Chad's here. He just got back. So you tell Chad to wait. I'm with Coach Shoebridge. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> Whew, I said, that's. But Coach Pruitt opened up all doors. And I, I'd like to thank him for that. It made me so welcome, have, as all of you have. Coach Dawson, I don't have enough words to express to Coach Dawson, who many nights my mom called, and uh, he spoke to her and he consoled her, and uh, she always said how special he was. And he is he, and I've told him many times that he gave. I believe that Coach Dawson gave my mom the strength at that time. For eight months later, I went away to college to Kansas. A few years later, my brother Terry signed a baseball contract with the Milwaukee Brewers and left home. How does a parent, how does an Italian mother let her next two boys leave after what just happened? And I believe Coach Dawson's conversations with my mom helped him mold me and my brother without him knowing that gave us the opportunity to further our education and athletic careers. So Coach Dawson, I'll, I'll never forget that. Coach Mickey Jackson and Coach Carl Coker that are here today that uh, helped coach that team. I've spoken with them many times, share stories about Teddy and the guys. Um, Chad Pennington, who's been very, very wonderful to me at any time to speak with us. Uh, we were very excited to have him with the New York Jets. We live right next, right by the stadium. And um, it was an exciting time for us to have him there. I'd like to thank uh, Mayor Williams, who's always been uh, very nice and uh, has opened all doors for us. For someone here I'd like to thank who's never been to a ceremony in 44 years, Ed Markham was the fire chief first on the call with Canova out at the accident. And he's here today, and he's, this is his first one. And to Ed, I wanna thank you for you and your staff for the unbelievable job and what you must have been through, gone through that night. Ed, thank you so much, it was an honor, honor to meet you again, thank you. I have so many friends here in town now, Steve Chapman, Ted Wilson, Parker Ward, the Stapleton family, and many, many more that make us feel at home here in Huntington. Um, to all the families I've met, I want to thank you for not forgetting my brother. My mom taught us that if someone wants to speak to you about Teddy, you talk to them about Teddy. Whatever it may be, football, uh, the kind of kid he was, things like, you talk to them. That'll help him live on in our hearts. So for all of you here in Huntington, myself and my family, we thank you for not ever forgetting my brother and everyone else who perished that day. We need to have them live on here at our ceremony and in our hearts. I share this moment today for the first time. Uh, my wife Luann is here, my brother Terry, and his children, Matthew and Tara, Tara's fiance, Steve, Terry's girlfriend, Roseanne, and her daughter, Jenna. I'm very, very honored that they made the trip down and were able to be with us today because I've always wanted them to meet all the tremendous and wonderful people that are here, here at the university and here in town, and everyone that stops and takes a moment to just say a kind word or introduce themselves. Where we live, it's not like that. It's very, as they say, hustle and bustle. We don't take the moment out to meet each other and to share experiences with each other. You guys have something very, very special here. And please, continue that. 
That night of the accident, during the day, we had lost a very important football game, and me and the guys, we went to the local dance. You know, we stood over in the corner, you know, all upset. But we didn't really know how upset of a day it really was going to be. One of our local firemen, who was a volunteer recreational coach, came into the dance and he found me and he said, Tommy, you have to go home. I'm like, Mr. Mitchell, I, you know. And he said, well, listen, he said, there's been an accident with your brother and you have to go home. So I went home, I, I went up the driveway and as I got to the house, now I'm 17 years old, I'm like, why is my father talking to our priest and he's crying and what are all these people doing here? Uh, I walked in the house and there was just people everywhere. It was confusing. It was, and I saw my mom sitting on a couch. She's one of seven girls and she had two sisters sitting with her and she was hysterical crying. And I, and she called me over and, and she told me that uh, what had happened. And that day stays with me, that moment stays with me forever and ever. Like it was yesterday. We have a wonderful community in Lyndhurst, very close, such as yours. My mom and dad were of deep faith and the very next morning, my mom never missed church, mm -hmm. never, ever. And the next morning she had two sisters take her to church. And as the priest read the gospel, the next thing they would do is they have a homily and they explain the gospel and what it means to have faith in this example. And when he saw my mom sitting in the front row or a couple of rows, he stopped and he paused and he said, I'll give you an example of faith. We all know of the tragedy that the Shoebridge family has experienced last night in the community of Lyndhurst. The truest meaning of faith that I can give you, I want you to know that Yolanda Shoebridge is sitting right here with her sisters at church believing in that her Lord is watching over her son. Our Catholic Church was very, very supportive of us. My mom, my mom was, the, my father was the worker, my mom was the strength. She, she was tough. You know, I, I, I'm a college football fan and um, I watch everything, and uh, a couple weeks back, I saw a special on a kicker for the University of Notre Dame named Kyle Brinza. He's their punter, kicker, and field goal kicker. And he was born with a club foot on his kicking foot. And they asked him, they said, well, how do you do this? How do you, how are you, you know? He says, well, I'm gonna tell you. My grandfather told me when I was young, God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. And you all here are God's strongest soldiers. You all have overcome so much in this tragedy to build this university, this athletic department, to the heights that it is today. And only God's strongest soldiers could do that. I believe through all these years that everyone that perished that day had a calling in life and that their sacrifice has made so many wonderful and great things for so many other people. At our small school we have a scholarship in Teddy's name and Marcelo's name. That scholarship that's helped kids go to college. I've spoken to people where they've used it as an inspirational speech, a motivational tool. You guys here down in Huntington, 
when you could have just stood by the wayside and forgot about it. You didn't. You stood up. And you said, you know what? We're going to be better. We're going to honor them. We're going to be bigger. We're going to be stronger. We're going to be Marshall University. And without the loss, without their sacrifice, we've seen so many scholarship funds to help people that maybe would have not had an opportunity. Maybe this university would have not had certain buildings, certain schooling for these students. Maybe that football field would still be over at the old field. Maybe the team wouldn't be 9-0. I believe, and I know my brother and his teammates and everyone that day are so proud of you that you all stood up and you said we're going to be bigger and we're going to be better and we're going to honor them. And I believe that that tragedy was their calling in life to help so many other people that needed help. At our school, we have a, our scoreboard has a 10 foot picture of Teddy in his press day outfit uniform and a 10 foot picture of Marcelo kicking the ball and every day that we go out to practice or class we're reminded of those Linhurst guys they're just Linhurst kids and if it's a tough day or you know coach sometimes it you, you, you just can't get it going on our kids who know the story very well our coaches will look up and say you know what we gotta honor these guys man we got to grit it out we got to man up. And just their picture has helped our program through so many tough times and so many situations of adversity that we had. I think that you all have done a wonderful job of carrying that same message. My mom was interviewed by Time Magazine once in front of our trophy case, all of Teddy's awards. And uh, the interviewer was looking at it and, and he said, Mrs. Shu, you know, how do you clean all that? And she says, I'll tell you how I clean it. I clean it with a lot of love, a lot of love. And that's what you all have done here. You've done this with a lot of love. And we, the families of those that were lost, thank you so much. To all you students, the athletes, the coaches, the faculty, the one thing that we could ask you, you know, you are at a special place. This is a national university. We have families across the country, always looking in, watching, seeing what's going on. We ask you to keep it a special place. Treat it with love. Honor them by doing that. My mom and dad came to the Hall of Fame when Teddy was inducted in 1990. You know, they didn't want to come. They hadn't been down here since right after the crash, and it was 20 years. And um, so, Coach, I had to give him a little pep talk. And I said, Mom and Dad, you know, you all got to get down there and, and see your friends and talk to everyone. And, you know, it wasn't closure, but it was so wonderful that they got to come down here and see you all and meet everyone again and see how you never forgot and see how their son always has lived on. And they were so very, very, very proud of that. They cried a lot. They probably spoke to a number of you people here. And I think it was a situation where they finally had a good feeling that their son did not die in vain because of all the good things that have gone on here. When you guys my first game here back in 99, 2000, when you guys do your chant and you say, we are Marshall, I think you guys are really saying, we are family. I think that's really what the message is. 
So we took that back to our high school and every one of our teams. You know when your coach brings you together and you say, okay, pride on three, one, two, three, pride. I'm sure you've all been involved in something like that. We in Lyndhurst, the coach brings everybody together and the coach says, we are. And the team says, Lyndhurst, and that's for you. That's for all of you. It is a true honor to speak to you today. I'm humbled by everyone that is here. I want my brother Terry to know, who was young at the time, that your brother Teddy was not only a great athlete, but he was a great kid. He was a humble young man. And as a coach, those are the kids that are really special. Your brother Teddy, he was special because of that, because of being a good person. And if we could all continue to be good people, we will always be successful. I want you to know that I love and miss my brother Teddy, and also like you to know that I love you all, and may God bless you and go herd. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shoebridge. Up next, we'll have a singing of The Fountain by the Marsh University Chorus.
We will now have the laying of the wreath and the silencing of the fountain with our head coach, Doc Holliday, and the Cerrito Fire Department, Russell Hutchison. James Michael Adams. Mark Rayburn Andrews. Michael Francis Blake. Dennis Michael Blevins. Willie Bluford, Jr. Larry Brown. Thomas Wayne Brown. Roger Keith Childers. Stuart Spence Cottrell. <coughs> Richard Lee Dartinger. David Grant DeBoard. <coughs> Kevin Francis Gilmore. David Deering Griffith, Jr.
Arthur W. Harris. Robert Anthony Harris. Bobby Wayne Hill. Joe Lee Hood. James Thomas Howard Jr. Marcello H. Latterman. Richard Adam Leck. Barry Winston Nash. Patrick J. Norrell. James Robert Patterson. Scotty Lee Reese. John Anton Rapassi Jr. Larry Sanders. Charles Allen Saylor. Arthur Kirk Shannon. Lionel Ted Shoebridge. Alan Jean Skeens. Jerry Dodson Stainback. Robert James Van Horn. Roger Arnie Vanover. Freddie Clay Wilson. John Patton Young. Thomas Jonathan Zaboral. Rick D. Tolly. Herbert Brackett. Albert Corelli, Jr. Frank Lorry. James Moss the second. Charles Couts. Eugene Morehouse. Brian O'Connor. Gary George. Jeffrey Nathan. James Joseph Schroer. Donald Tackett, Jr. Donald Booth. Charles Arnold. Rachel Arnold. Joseph Chambers. Peggy Chambers.
Ray Hagley. Shirley Hagley. Arthur Harris. E. O. Heath. Elaine Heath. James Gerald. Cynthia Gerald. Kenneth Jones. Michael Prestera. Glenn Preston. Phyllis Preston. H.D. Proctor. Courtney Phillips Proctor. Maril Ralston. Helen Ralston. Norman Weichman. Captain Frank Abbott. Jerry Smith. Charlene Pote. Danny Dees. And Patricia Vaught. Now have the singing of our alma mater. And I apologize, we left one name off the list Parker Ward.
seated. Before I close, I'd like to remind everyone that there is a reception to follow immediately in the Shockey Dining Room in the Student Center. Um, Mr. Shoebridge talked about the We Are Marshall, and since we have such a big crowd here, let's, uh, let's do a We Are Marshall chant one time so they can hear it all the way back in New Jersey. How about it? Everybody ready? We are Marshall! Thank you guys for coming.